Welcome everyone. I really appreciate you attending today. What we're going to review is our digital mock-up, our DMU module that does collision and clearance analysis. So what we do is we run this module within our EDM, our Enterprise Data Manager. So if I pull up in the web interface here, um, you can see this is our standard web interface for EDM. We can go through and we can submit jobs for your Simplify, your, um, our standard out-of-the-box scripts, but for this module we have a specific DMU module for it. So when you come in, you go to submit a new project, you just name the project name, and one thing that David mentioned earlier about this, which is really unique to how Core Technology operates this module, is we utilize what's called an SQL database. So within that database, we are able to create specific filters as in maybe nuts, bolts, washers, you, there's always a specific bolt that has a thread that's going to collide. Therefore, when you're running these operations, you don't want that thread that might be in your assembly a thousand times to now have a thousand different collisions just because you've used it multiple times. But with the SQL database, once you input that part number, or that part name into our, um, our process and you, you have that stored in the database, Every time you run a collision detection and that part comes up in those modules or in those assemblies, you don't, it'll actually get bypassed and it won't be considered a collision anymore. So it's really unique to uh, how we have probably process with the SQL database. Uh, so we have some of our parameters in here. So you got your project name, your assembly file that you're using. I'm going to compute collisions for this one. Um, we also have modules where you can just run this operation just to see kind of neighboring parts and things like that. Um, I'm going to have an automatic box size calculation, and then for this one, I want to compute the penetration distance. So I want to know how far in each model um, or each collision it actually penetrates. So when I'm going through and I can determine maybe this model could just be shifted a couple millimeters versus needs to be completely shrunk a couple millimeters or things like that. So we go through, we can run it later, but this time we, uh, we ran it now. So these are the different projects that I've ran. So you see that I have this in my web interface, but once I open up 3D Evolution, we actually have that same interface. So for this module, we're, we're gonna start looking at the chassis. So what's really unique about how our process operates is we can read in any major CAD software. So if you have Katia, NX, Creo, and on all those major packages, we don't really care which uh, software you use to export. We can read in that exact DREP geometry and do an exact collision detection, a very accurate collision detection analysis on it. Um, what's unique kind of ours compared to others, I know a lot of other collision detection analysis softwares out there today will utilize tessellated data, which is almost like an approximation when you're trying to calculate those collisions. So sometimes you'll get some false positives and you'll see that it's, it actually can be a headache and cause uh, more issues down the line because it's kind of a real life scenario to say you're, uh, you're designing something and you uh, maybe you're designing a certain thread for maybe like a spark plug. And once you kind of design that certain thread for that spark plug, but then they change spark plug designs because it needs a maybe more powerful spark plug, something that can give it a little bit more juice, it will now um, cause a, a collision, which you might not notice till on the manufacturing floor because you might be able to, might not be able to get that spark plug out because it could be a longer spark plug. So therefore, they have to go back through and remanufacture and redesign some of the parts and some of the um, some of those production parts. So then they can be utilized for um, other modules and other MPI programs and things like that. So what's great about the, the using the BREP geometry is we know it's going to be an accurate representation, but then when we now run it through with that BREP geometry, we actually create tessellated files to use for visualization. So what you see here is actual tessellated data created from that exact BREP geometry. So now you can have an entire assembly and be very easily manipulated on the screen because graphically, when you have triangulated surfaces, it's actually easy to calculate than an actual BREP geometry with all the topology that it has to understand and calculate behind the scenes. So you can see, so we have our top level assembly of our chassis. If you come through here, 
You know, I drag them to the window. You can see kind of internal collisions, view alone. I can select it. I can update relevant, not relevant. So just say, I want to see all the internal collisions. So now we've got 2D lines of every single part that collides on here. Uh, there's a couple different ways that we can kind of view these parts. Now I can sit here, I can click on a part, and I can say right click, and I can um, select in DMU. Um, I can go through and I can say I can select the part in the model tree. So there, there's also there's a lot of different ways that we can kind of select these different parts and understand kind of what's going on with them. So we have this part right now, and once I click on it, what's really unique is we actually have all the attributes to that component itself. So when you have all the part names, part numbers, the design controls, um, who, who releases certain parts and things like that, if you know it comes from specific groups, you know who to kind of go back to and talk to about who designed this part and how you can utilize this for the manufacturing floor. So if I bring this in, and I would just want to say I want to see um, the external collisions just to this part alone, now I can see exactly which parts collide with it and how many collisions there are. So it shows that I have three collisions, so you see all three parts that it collides with. Now, most likely, some of these are going to be like welding collisions, so you, you're probably going to be welding this part, so it's okay to have a little bit of collision there. Some might need to be trimming on some of these pieces just because they need to take it back, so it will weld properly. So this is where you can kind of analyze and see how these collisions are actually um, processed on the screen, so then you can kind of change them uh, before it hits the manufacturing floor, before you, there's a lot of money spent, a lot of time wasted. So if you, now that you see that, you know, I can go through and click parts a certain way and kind of see what we have. Another way to do this, so I'm just going to bring this all the way back on the screen. Actually, I just want to view this alone for right now and not see all the collisions. So we have these buttons up here. So you have your home, you have your options, and you have your filter. So here we can actually start filtering by name or we can filter by collisions. We want to just see only colliding parts. We don't want to see just colliding parts. So right now it's going to show all, so we can filter by name. Um, if we wanted to, so now you might have a question like, if we have our first iteration of an assembly, what happens when you start changing certain parts and certain um, controls and things like that? So we actually have a revision control. So now let's just say you have you you have team scenarios. You're, you're, um, your uh, life cycle management software or solution. And you will already process this through the DMU process and you already have it all stored back in the team center. But now you want to add the second revision because it just got released as a production revision. So then you go back through, it'll, it'll recalculate to see which parts have changed and then it'll do the new collisions based on those, those parts have changed. So you can actually, I haven't done it for this module, I'll show you on the next module. And we'll get a little bit more in depth into that. But it's uh, a really neat feature to have when you actually have um, revision control within your DMU module. So right here, what you have is this, this is called the collision report. So each part, you can see what part it collides with. And you can see the penetration distance. You can see the percentage of common voxel between the two parts. You can see the minimum side of collision bounding box and the maximum side of collision bounding box. So this is, um, it's really neat to understand kind of how far it goes in and like the, the superseding percentage it goes into that module, into that part. And then you can now even come in and say, you know, maybe I scroll down here and I see something like, we'll just use this spring right here. So I bring this in and I say, I want to see external collisions. So you know that, you know, with this cap and this, this bottom piece, you can see that those are going to collide. I mean, it's going to have uh, a lot of pressure and force on those, so it's okay to have those a little bit of collisions because it really, it's just going to be pressure fitting basically in between those two fittings. So maybe we'll deem these ones as non-relevant because we know it's okay that these are collide. We don't need to change any specs. These are actually completely designed to have that contact. So every single one of these will make those. And then so now we'll say uh, maybe this lines group comes in here. And we can look at this 
and say, okay, maybe are these flexible lines? Are these fixed lines? I mean, are we going to be able to move some of these lines? So now you have to understand, and that's where the, the features come up and the attributes come up really, really helps because you can see whether it's a flexible fitting. Um, you can understand the, the material, the density used in the model. So you can determine whether it's a relevant or non-relevant collision. So we'll just deem this one as a relevant collision because those are fixed lines and um, we're probably going to have to route those differently. So we can keep going through all the different parts and then like I said, we also have the filter to say, you know, these parts are irrelevant to this type of collision analysis and we can exclude those from our, um, our process. Uh, so what we have over here is we have a couple more tools. So now I can see what's collisions I have analyzed. I can see which ones I haven't analyzed. So you can go through and you can actually print these as HTML files and um, you can give them to some of your team members and they can go through and they can do the same thing if you've made it so far and you need someone else to kind of take over. Um, but this is a good way to have options on being able to run and see all the collisions within an entire assembly on the fly. Uh, so for the, for the next example, I want to show you the truck. So you can see it's just very generic truck, looks pretty simple. But for this one, you can see how many controls, but it has a couple different um, children and modifiers on it. So you see this one actually has, it says there's modification to the children parts. So you know that basically there's some parts underneath this assembly that actually have changed. And as I scroll through here, you can see, oh, you know what, this rim right here, it actually has changed. There's a there's a positional difference. And there's another way to be able to see exactly all the differences, you can come to our last tab, which wasn't shown up on the other application, just because we haven't ran a revision control on the chassis. So you can see, okay, so you have the cabin, you have that rim, that it moved 6.78 millimeters in the X and negative 3.6 in the Y. So you can see the exact position movement. And then when you see like this one, this, this is a removed occurrence. So from revision one to revision two, we actually removed the beacon from the assembly. And then from revision one to revision two, we've added these lights right here. So we, can, we know exactly what has changed. And you also see even one of the side members did change too and actually completely changed the length of it. So that, that can now potentially add a different collision into the, uh, into the module. So when we bring it back into here, you can say, okay, I want to bring this in. I want to see all the external collisions. So now we can see, so you have your cab and you have your light. You know, so maybe this is actually improper. You need to pull this light out. So this is a relevant collision. Now you have the axle, if so the axle, you know, maybe there actually needs to be a cutout. So this is a relevant collision. This is a, it needs to be redesigned. So what's really unique is you can sit there and you're going through and you're clicking. So once you've gone through this on the very first revision, once there's a second revision that comes to this, you don't have to go through and re-click all those different collisions now. You can see that, okay, the, there was a collision here, but now it has been modified. So this is why it's at revision two. And it actually does not show the collision anymore. And we're good about this, this calculation. So we can kind of go on our way and utilize um, this for further processing. Yeah, can I ask a question, Mr. DeLuca? Yes, you can, sir. So my question is, is, so now that you see this and you're communicating with people across the globe, and you know that someone in Europe right now is 420, so they're probably not working. Um, so let's say, can you add comments to this? Yeah, yeah, so as you go through this, um, we actually have this annotation tab, and Thank you can you. specifically have um, text annotations and you know, call out specific points of this one. Say, you know, this needs to be manufactured, and then you'll have to just. Um, and then once you've got to save that back out, it'll restore back on that database. So then, when that new engineer wants to come back in and look at what has changed over while he was sleeping, it'll have um, all the annotations and all the, the differences that had changed in that model. That's very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, while we have a break, is there any other questions? None so far. I think we can move on. All right. Well, I don't have much else to, to discover or to talk about. You know, I've 
I went through this really quickly, and I wanted to really just dis dis display how how we utilize our VREP technology to do the calculations on these models and to be able to export and to use the, the tessellated data as a visual visualization aspect. So when you you know you bring this to your management and say, you know, we have this new program and they want to see all of the collisions that happen in this assembly. And you kind of bring it up and show them, you know, okay, you got all these bolts, okay, we excluded the filthy these out. And you can do this all on the fly. So then now your management can quickly see what uh, what collisions there are. And what's really great is if you have our, so you have 3D evolution to do the processing. You can actually use our viewer of 3D Analyzer to view the analysis that has been ran through our DMU module. So maybe what you use is like one or two licenses of 3D Evolution to process all this heavy data, and then you use 3D Analyzer so your manager doesn't have to have a CAD package on the software on his computer. He can have just 3D Analyzer, just a quick little viewer to view 3D models and as well to, to view these um, this collision analysis as a 3D representation, and it makes it extremely lightweight, and you can even use like a 16 gigabyte RAM computer to do that type of visualization, things like that. So it's a, it's a huge benefit to have, and because um, I know some companies today, they, they actually utilize JT files to manually go through and see where those collisions are, and I know that when you're either one, you're going to have human errors, there's going to be times where someone just looks at models and everything so long, that they could actually skip over a part that, they, that is colliding. It's just, you know, they're just getting tired and they're just ready to go home and, you know, maybe have a beer or something. So it's, it's really neat to be able to process something overnight and then be able to come in the next day to see exactly what's processed and what's changed. And you can now have it all at the click of a button to be able to have, visually see all of the collisions and something that could be detrimental long term if you let it go through all the design processes and to the manufacturing floor just to have to go back through and redesign some of these modules. So as, that's what I wanted to touch on today. Um, if there's anything else that you'd like me to go back over and review, I can uh, show those modules in more in depth. And if, uh, if you want to reach out to us, we look forward to hearing from you.